Hi, I'm Anne-Marie Kelnoffer, owner of Sour Girl. I make and sell unpasteurized sauerkraut. And I'm happy to be here today to tell you a little bit about why I think sauerkraut is awesome. There's so many things that I like about sauerkraut. I eat it almost every day. I like the squishing and smashing that comes from making it. And I like playing with all the different ingredients and discovering new flavors. What makes the flavors so unique is the fermentation. Fermentation is one of the oldest forms of food preservation, and the history of sauerkraut goes back to the 3rd century BC, when it was given as a meal ration to workers building the Great Wall of China. Later in history, it was known to armies as a power food. The health benefits made it popular among sailors at sea for long periods of time, in the 18th century, Dutch sailors used it to prevent scurvy, and the British and American sailors followed suit soon after. I've enjoyed the fermentation process in winemaking, sourdough, and a few other experiments in my home. I really enjoy the simplicity of wild fermentation, like sauerkraut's dry salt method, where it's just the cabbage and salt. The natural sugars and yeast of the cabbage break down, creating healthy bacteria and microbes, probiotics, while the salt creates a safe environment and kills the bad bacteria. Once the fermentation is complete, you have a living organism on a highly nutritious vegetable. Like yogurt or kombucha, the organisms created when fermented are full of probiotics. It's also packed with vitamins, minerals, high in fiber, and low in calories. I mentioned that I make unpasteurized sauerkraut. That means that it's not heated or shelf stable. The sauerkraut I made needs to be refrigerated and is sold in resealable bags. While it is still full of nutrients, Pasteurization kills all of the healthy bacteria and probiotics found in sauerkraut. So I recommend unpasteurized sauerkraut that is made without vinegar for the best flavor and most health benefits. Let's start with the benefits to your gut. It's great for your gut. All of the good bacteria created during the fermentation process helps to balance the flora of the gut. The flora is a first line of defense against bad bacteria and toxins. If you've ever had to take antibiotics, you may have experienced a little diarrhea. And while the antibiotics helped you fight an illness, they also killed off both the good and the bad bacteria in your gut. Sauerkraut helps restore the balance and replenish the good bacteria. And it may even reduce the diarrhea that you get when taking antibiotics. The fermentation process creates enzymes that break down nutrients for digestion and improves absorption. All of this healthy gut activity strengthens the stomach lining, which directly, directly impacts the immune system and boosts natural antibodies. Because of the better gut health and high fiber, nearly four grams per cup, sauerkraut keeps bowel movements regular. Despite its reputation for causing gas, regularly eating sauerkraut can reduce bloating, gas, and constipation. Some studies suggest it can even ease the symptoms of Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, and irritable bowel syndrome. In my experience, people that experience gas when eating unpasteurized sauerkraut don't have good he gut health and the probiotics and bacteria are a shock to their systems. To these folks, I recommend starting eating sauerkraut in small daily quantities until your gut adjusts to all of the new healthy organisms. It's great. Probiotics also play an important role in the overall gut health and absorption. Like yogurt and kombucha, 
Sauerkraut is packed full of beneficial probiotics that help the body absorb vitamins and minerals, including vitamin C and iron, helping to build a strong immune system. Probiotics also reduce cholesterol, making sauerkraut heart healthy. Although I should caution you because sauerkraut has a lot of salt, which can be a concern for folks with high blood pressure. I did find a study that suggested sauerkraut can reduce blood pressure, but I personally would do more research before adjusting my diet if high blood pressure were an issue for me. Researchers believe that the greater the variety of probiotic strains in a sample, the wider the range of health benefits. One cup of sauerkraut contains up to 28 distinctly different strains, giving it a wide range of health benefits. Probiotics are measured in colony forming units, CFUs. One gram of sauerkraut can have 1,000 to 100 million CFUs, making even a quarter cup per day extremely beneficial to your overall health. It's even known to ward off or reduce the effects of the common cold and other viruses. Let's take a Let's take a closer look at the nutritional value of sauerkraut. Here's a breakdown of the nutrients found in one cup of sauerkraut. What stands out to me is first of all the low calories, only 27. No fat, four grams of fiber, one gram of protein, 35% of your daily value of vitamin C, but note the high level of sodium. It's clear to me that sauerkraut brings plenty of vitamins and minerals to the table. Vitamin K2 strengthens bones and is known to prevent calcium buildup in the arteries. Calcium and phosphorus give us strong bones and teeth, while B vitamins, thiamine, and riboflavin prevent fatigue, reduce stress, and can even relieve irritability. Magnesium and zinc are necessary for healthy brain function and improved memory. The rich antioxidants in cabbage reduce cancer risk, and the fermentation process creates compounds that are thought to suppress the development and spread of precancerous cells. Now you know the why of Now you know the why of eating sauerkraut. But how do you start eating more of it? After all, it's a relish and it's not Oktoberfest yet. Here's a list of some of the ways that I use sauerkraut. I really suggest playing with flavor and getting creative. Sauerkraut is vegan and paleo friendly, so unless someone has a cabbage allergy, it can be enjoyed by nearly everyone. And while unpasteurized sauerkraut has the most health benefits, I typically like to cook with kraut, but then I top it off with a little bit of fresh, unheated sauerkraut before serving. You'll see how heating changes the flavor. For example, I had a recipe I was trying and I was mixing anise with cabbage making a new sauerkraut. I was really excited and when it was all ready, I sat down and thought I was gonna have a great product, but I was really disappointed with it. So I tossed it in the fridge and forgot about it until I was in a pinch and needed some sauerkraut for dinner one evening. And I put it on top of some meat, probably pork chops or something like that. And wow, was I surprised after it came out of the oven. That sauerkraut that wasn't very good to eat raw was sweet and delicious and the flavors had just melded together. You know, so I say, go ahead and cook your kraut, but then when it comes to the end of it, before you get ready to serve, toss a little bit of room temperature on top so that you can get the most out of those health benefits. Let's talk about how to take care. Let's talk about how to take care of your sauerkraut. Whether you make your own or you buy it from your local sauerkraut maker, 
You'll want to keep it sealed and in the refrigerator. Fresh sauerkraut should have plenty of liquid covering the cabbage. So if your sauerkraut starts to dry out, you can make a simple 2% salt water brine solution, which is one tablespoon of salt to one quart of water, but you wanna use canning salt. It's important because it doesn't contain iodine or caking chemicals. So you pour that brine solution over your cabbage just to cover it. And while refrigeration slows down the fermentation process, it doesn't stop it. So properly stored sauerkraut will keep at least six months in the refrigerator, but it will continue to ferment and the taste and texture will change over time. The flavors will become more sharp and the cabbage may soften. If you want to store your unpasteurized sauerkraut longer, you can freeze it without killing the microbes. The probiotics will become active again once it's defrosted but you may find that freezing it will change the texture, might make it a little bit softer. Drying your kraut in a dehydrator is also an option. And again, the probiotics will survive and become active when your sauerkraut's rehydrated. I've been told that this is a good for camping, hiking, and a great way to get sauerkraut into your soups. But just remember, any heating or pasteurizing, like canning your sauerkraut to make it shelf stable, will kill the probiotics in your fresh sauerkraut. Now it will still be full of vitamins and minerals, but the probiotics will be dead. And here, is a, and here is a reference list for the sources that I use today. I hope you found this interesting and are inspired to try a new way of getting some sauerkraut into your diet. If you're interested in Sour Girl, please check out my Facebook page, or you can contact me via email or by telephone. Thanks for viewing, and thanks for the Sustainable Living Association and the City of Fort Collins for hosting this event.